Good morning, everybody. Um, those of you that don't know me, my name is Tracy, and I'm going to be talking to you guys for a few minutes about stewardship. So if you happen to have your insert from inside your bulletin, that's where I'm going to be starting with, and then just a couple of little questions, sort of. Okay. Let me make sure I'm putting on my glasses so that I can see everything very clearly here. At first glance, Jonah seems to be an odd choice for a reflection on stewardship. There is no offering of gifts here, no passing the plate, no mention of money at all. Missing is the imagery of the overflowing baskets of first fruits in Deuteronomy 26, or the quiet generosity of the widow in Luke 21. Jonah, as we'll see, it's even a, is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's even a particularly generous, isn't even a particularly generous person, which I was kind of surprised about. I only knew about him and the whale, so I had to kind of look at Jonah a little bit more there. And, and you'll see. And yet, this little story of a reluctant prophet has much to offer as we discover the joy of sharing God's abundance, God's abundant grace. Jonah learns over the course of his story that God's justice is not a zero-sum game, meaning there's not some big pie that we're all fighting to get a piece of. There's no pie. This is the God of loaves and fishes, turning water into wine. So more for another person or for other people doesn't mean less for me. There is plenty of God's grace to go around, enough for all the Ninevites and Jonah too. Should I not be concerned about Nineveh, asked God, as Jonah sulks, but the obvious truth is that God has been concerned about Jonah all along. Even when Jonah is running away from God, God provides what is needed, safety in the storm, a rescue from the depths of the sea. The abundance of God's, of God's grace is that there is enough. No one needs to be left out. We live today in a culture that is bent on scarcity. We have believed that we have believed the narrative that there is not enough to go around, and so we should hang on tight to what we have. We've con we've convinced that there is something that you get something good that means that there will be less available for me. Perhaps the greatest gift the church can give the world right now is to bear witness to God's abundance. The story of Jonah along with the rest of the biblical witness, convinces us that there is enough, enough of God's care, enough of God's grace, and enough of God's love. So if you look at the questions on there, the first one, in what ways does our congregation operate within a mindset of scarcity? So personally, I love the word mindset. It's a super buzz word right now that people like to use. But what does it really mean? It's really just your way of thinking. What is your point of view? And I draw attention to the glasses because I like a good visual. So what kind of glasses are you putting on? What is your view? How are you seeing things? And I like to think of it as in your rose-colored glasses. So if you're familiar with the, the putting on of rose-colored glasses, it means that you're seeing things in a rosy way, a positive way. I feel like sometimes rose-colored glasses get a bad rap, that people think that those things are unrealistic. But I think that's what we need to view things through, through God's eyes. You read the things in the Bible, before reading those things, they seemed unrealistic. Jonah in the belly of a whale, that seems a little unrealistic if you're thinking about, can I really conceive of these things happening? So again, you put on those rose-colored glasses, and then you can see those things. So what, what kind of, how have we operated in a mindset of scarcity? So scarcity meaning lack. As a congregation, I feel like we have made some choices that we're worried. We're worried about the future. How are things going to turn out for us? How are they going to go? So we have made some choices based on that, that kind of fear. And then I feel like we've really pivoted to this next question, and I'm going to change the question a little bit. It asks, in what ways do you practice abundance? And I'm pivoting that to say, what ways does our congregation practice abundance? Well, I'd say that it's because we're here. We're here, in this presence, here, trying to be a part of things, and we're moving forward. We're moving forward with the daycare, moving forward with building improvements, moving forward with our program, programming, having it open to the public with our, our opening, uh, pardon me, our events that we're having with our opening and affirming, as well as having it as an open house. So we are moving forward actively, actively in this abundance. And I ask each of you, what role will you play in this? What glasses will you put on? Are you going to put on your rose-colored glasses, your abundance glasses? How are you going to view things? Because as our tagline for our stewardship goes, because of you, our church changes lives. So what kind, how are you going to view things? What kind of glasses are you going to put on? 
These last two questions I leave for you to think about as you're thinking about what role you want to play. What could our congregation do if we really took seriously the abundance of God's grace? How would lives be transformed? What might happen if we oriented our whole lives and our whole ministry toward the abundance of God's grace? And I ask you, what role will you play in that? Now, many of you have received your stewardship packet already in the mail, and so I just want to draw attention to one portion of it, just for clarity's sake. At the bottom portion of each one of the lines, as you're filling out your form, there's a part that speaks about the wider mission. So we're going to be filling out the top portion of that, and then our wider mission is addressed through our church programming that we have. So you only need to fill out this top portion, not the bottom portion about the wider mission, because like I said, that's something that the church handles. So I want you all to think about what kind of glasses are you putting on? I had to put my glasses on so I could see clearly, so I knew what I was doing. Put your glasses on clearly as you're filling out your form so you know what you're doing. 